that with the goggles on. Uh, a, a lot of the smartest people in crypto are moving their businesses out of the U.S. because they're scared of like uh, the U.S.'s regulations. Because of the hostility. Correct. Yeah, so, crypto is moving out of the U.S. because of hostility toward crypto. Correct. So what are you going to do to stop it? Well, we'll stop it because I don't want that. I don't want that. I want that. If we're going to embrace it, we have to let them be here. Yes, sir. You know, we did it when NFTs were not hot. Yeah. And we made NFTs hot again. Yeah, with the guy. You heard it, my friends, the future president himself. Um, we need to let crypto into the United States. And uh, <laughs> it's so funny. Anything to do with Trump. Uh, he just, he's a hilarious guy. What's going on, my free thinking rebels? Welcome to another Decrypting Crypto. Uh, look, this week, we are going to look at a couple of news articles, a couple more things from Trump. We're going to dive into the market, um, look at the spot BTF, BTF. Oh, my God. What is a BTF? The spot, e, the spot ETF for Bitcoin. And just kind of look at the inflow, outflow. Nothing crazy, nothing crazy to look at right now. And then we'll also take a look at a couple of other videos. Um, yeah. Welcome, welcome. I'm Stefan Subero, the Holistic Growth Mentor. And um, yeah, let's jump in straight into this next article. All right. So Trump's pro crypto bluster at NFT gala lacked policy substance. Look, we're not going to dive straight super deep into this. Basically, Trump doesn't really know much about crypto. I think this whole, you know, him boosting crypto is just because he knows that's what the people want. Um, he doesn't really have that much knowledge of the crypto space in general. Now, we can kind of see here, he says, during his, and again, he wasn't a crypto guy before, right? So during his first stint in the White House, Donald Trump was not a fan of cryptocurrencies. He once tweeted they were based on thin air. He later sold millions of dollars worth of NFTs. And this week, he rebranding himself as a crypto candidate of choice. Goes on to say, if you're in favor of crypto, you're going to vote for Trump because they want to end it. He also vowed to make sure his campaign can accept crypto donations. Yay. Um, what else is has in here? Yeah, basically, like I said, like he doesn't know much, right? When they asked him about CBDCs and government blockchains, obviously these are not good things. You know, he said, I think it's all has its place. So obviously he doesn't really know that much. Um, but again, he's a smart guy. So he he's definitely using... Um, the market as a benchmark for him to kind of push his campaign. Hey, all good, man. Do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. All right. So before we jump into the market update, let's take a quick look. Again, I always like to watch these videos from Michael Saylor. Again, he is the OG, Bitcoin OG, always dropping some amazing knowledge. Famously said, I'm going to be buying the top forever. Bitcoin is the exit strategy. It is the strongest asset. So what we see right now is the Bitcoin has just emerged as a trillion dollar asset class. And it's alongside names like Apple and Google and Microsoft. But the difference between Bitcoin and the Magnificent Seven is Bitcoin's an asset class. It's not a company. There's not enough room in the capital structure of those companies to hold 10 trillion or 100 trillion dollars worth of capital. So Bitcoin's competing against gold, which is 10x what it is right now. It's competing against the S&P index. It's competing against real estate, a $100 trillion plus asset class as a store of value. So we believe capital is going to keep flowing from those asset classes into Bitcoin because Bitcoin is technically superior to those asset classes. And that, that being the case, there's just no reason to sell the winner to buy the losers. Uh, he he speaks so well about it and it's 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 simple honestly it's it can be simpler than that if we really sit down and analyze bitcoin what it has done in its short lifespan it really is the closest thing to gold um the apex asset out of everything and it, it's only beginning it's only beginning like this 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 next bull market we have so much institutional money coming in there's so many things changing but overall you want to look at you want to look at bitcoin as your savings don't treat it as a, something you're going to be trading in and out of yeah you can have a trading portfolio specifically for it but look at always accumulating no matter where bitcoin is you dollar cost average into bitcoin 
every single week, every single month. If there's one thing, my friends, that you can do right now, if you have no knowledge of crypto, you don't know what the hell to do, get yourself a wallet, whether it's Atomic Wallet um, or even better, Cold Storage, a Ledger Nano, whatever it is, learn how to use it. Get an exchange and just buy Bitcoin every single month, every single week, whenever you can, store it in your ledger. Forget about it. That is your, if you think about it that way, check that in 10 years from now, five, six, seven, 10 years from now, you'll be set. You, you'll, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be well taken care of. All right, next up, let's jump into the charts. Well, let's, let's see what's going on. So look, the W pattern that we spoke about last week, it's still pretty much in play. We can see that we came down, we formed the first end, we came up, we tested this, this um, resistance again, which is the perfect zone, came down. We had this nether wick candle. We had this little mini crash on the weekend, but I still think that this W is still in play. Now, basically, for this to fulfill, we need to, we're going to have to come back up to this resistance around 65,000 and break above it and Again, the, the ultimate zone we're looking at is about $71,000. Now, are we going to break that right now? I, I can't really tell, right? We really don't have that much volume in the market. Like if we jump over and look again, the driving force of the volume has been the Bitcoin ETF. And we can see, yeah, we got a bit of inflow last week. We had a little bit more, but... Um, all of last week was pretty neutral, right? Um, I guess I think a little bit more outflow than inflow. So overall, we still don't have the needed volume, that needed extra energy to really get Bitcoin out of where we are right now. So at this stage in time, we could potentially just see potentially a break from here and then come back and get a retest of the previous all-time high, that $70,000 mark. And potentially we can just range and continue. We're right now in this kind of downwards um, parallel channel, which I think is what we could potentially be following right now, right? We come up and we just kind of range in here. Um, look, overall, if we look at when we normally break out after the halving, it normally takes two, three months. Um, you know, my prediction is somewhere around um, September of this year. So it really is going to be dependent on the inflow of money into the coin. Before we close this off, my friends, and again, if you enjoy the content, please drop a comment. Let me know what are your feelings right now? Are you accumulating? What are you holding? What's happening in your portfolio? And at any stage, if you do need any help or any extra guidance, feel free to use the link down in the description. See how we could potentially help you. Now, Jack Dorsey, another great mind, a crypto mind. Um, let's, let's, let's listen to what he has to say. What do you find appealing about bitcoin about digital currency where do you see it going in the next 10 20 years i think the most beautiful thing about it is there's no one person setting the direction and there's no one person on the other side that can stop it we have something that is um pretty organic in nature and very principled in its original design you know i think the bitcoin white paper is one of the most seminal works of computer science in the last 20 30 years it's poetry and the underlying principles behind it that went into it, even to the point of releasing it under a pseudonym. I, I think that's a, a very, very powerful statement. The timing of when it was released is powerful. It, it was it was a total activist move, moving the world forward in, in a way that um, I think is extremely noble and honorable and enables everyone to be part of the story. So there you have it. Bitcoin is a noble activist move it really does signify a very very big milestone in a movement towards freedom financial freedom and it is the main vehicle that um, you can use to accomplish that look my free thinking rebels that's all i got for you today i'll see you in the next one stefan out